Hello, everyone. Today, I'm making oats. Today, I'm making oats for my new worm cultures that are coming today. So first, I'm boiling the water. I'm trying not to get my face in the camera, but it'll happen anyways. So first, I boiled the water, and then I put some uh, quick oats in there. I normally use mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes, but I thought I'd try quick oats for once. So while that is making, I'm going to show. So yesterday we ran out and got um, some large entree containers. My sister's here. Uh, but some large entree containers, and I got three of them because I'm getting. I already have micro worms, but I'm doing micro worms, Walter worms, and banana worms. So I just put MW for micro worms, WW for Walter worms, and then BW for uh, banana worms. I already have two micro worm containers, but so those are the three that are coming today, and then also I have vinegar that's coming today. This is a Hawaiian punch container, and um, I was going to use just like a half gallon juice container, but this one they have a little grip on the back and it also has a handle on the top, so it'd be easier to hold. And I already took the label off and cleaned it. So while the oats are making themselves, we're going to do vinegar eels first. So I have, um, this is a quarter of a gallon of apple cider vinegar. I'm just going to put it like right, right into the container. That smells nice. I'm going to add a little bit from this container, not all of it. In our store near us, only sells them in quarter of a gallon, so I couldn't get like a whole gallon at a time. Great. About half of that I put in there. And you want to fill it about halfway, which you say is about halfway. And then I'm going to put like cool water in there. So now, this is what I'll put the vinegar eels in. It's a two ounce starter culture, so I'll just pour them in and there'll be some room at the top. And then you just take a paper towel or a coffee filter and put it over like this and then rubber band it. Um, I'll have to like double it and then rubber band it because it's a smaller spout than uh, some people use mason jars. Um, and then there's also jars that have a more narrower neck to where it's like longer, almost like a base. And people stuff like polyfill in there. I've seen that. Um, but when this evaporates, you fill it up with regular water. And I've seen people go six months in a mason jar without refreshing it. And it's been perfectly fine. But at six months, you want to be very careful that you don't crash your culture. But yeah, this will be, that's the water that they live in. I'm going to take an apple that's gotten beat up a little bit. Probably shouldn't show knives. But whatever. They eat apple slices. Some people use brown sugar. I don't know if brown sugar is cheaper than apples, but with brown sugar, you have to feed that every day. With apples or pears or some sort of fruit, they can go a little bit longer without having to feed them. You don't have to feed them as much. So you just kind of 
nicely. Cut up the apple. Make this video too long. The vinegar eels will pretty much cut any, will eat anything. So, this has to be small enough to where you can get it in the container. <coughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to put a whole apple. Well, Actually, I could just put a half an apple and then kind of put this in the refrigerator. And if it kind of rots, it wouldn't be too big of a deal. Given that I can still put the half rotten apple in there. Because the vinegar eels won't care. They'll just eat anything. So, I would label this bag, but if people see rotting apples, they might throw it out, so that's why I'm labeling it. Because I'm sure if I just left it in there, someone would eventually throw it out. But I don't want, and we have tons of apples, so. It's almost like we have like 20 apples, so one won't hurt. I'll probably have to buy a bag of apples just for the vinegar eels. But as you see, one apple is enough, well, a half an apple almost, is enough for a whole gallon container. So it doesn't take that much. So yeah, this will be the container. I'll have to grab a rubber band from somewhere, but I'll just put this on there like that. And maybe I'll slice it in two spots so it can go between the handle. But I like the handle because obviously it's used for a whole gallon of Hawaiian punch, so it can support the weight of this. But yeah, every uh, six months or so, uh, I'll have to get another container like this, fill it halfway with apple cider vinegar, and fill it almost to here with water, add some sort of fruit or brown sugar or something in there, and then I'll take a squirt from this culture and now start a whole nother culture. So that's my, that's my vinegar eel culture. And the oats should be cool very soon. If I have, I'll do another video setting up this culture. This is going to be my white worm culture. It's a little bit different because these, these worms that I'm doing right now, they live in oats, mashed potatoes, or some people do Rice Krispies in cereal, and then just mix it with water, and that's what they keep them in. And that supposedly is doesn't have as bad as an odor. But, who knows? But I'm using oats. I normally use mashed potatoes. So. And then these live in vinegar. It takes a lot to kill these. If you let your culture go for a while, they will die. But it takes a lot to kill them. But these, live in, these will live in dirt. And they're coming tomorrow. So I'll set up that culture for some other time. Alright, so I have my my oats. I kind of spread them along the sides in the bowl to cool off with it. And they're not fully cooled down, but I'm going to get them in their containers. Because I want them to retain some of their heat. They will eventually fully cool down. But they're a pretty good temperature right now. And I also cut 
the paper towel so it can go into the handle for the vinegar eels and I rubber banded that on. You can kind of see that looks like. I cut it so it wasn't sitting on the handle. And I will have to cut it again, but right, I can rip it too. It's cut to the point where I can still use the handle and not mess up the paper towel on them. Um, so, I'm going to take my three containers. Banana worms. And eventually I'll put more than just BW, WW, and MW on here, but for right now I know what they stand for. Um, the micro worms, MW, they get to about a tenth of an inch. And then Walter worms and banana worms both get, they're pretty much the same thing. And they both get a sixteenth of an inch. So a little bit smaller than micro worms. So if you have a fish that takes micro worms, you can you can always start them off with a little bit of a smaller food as well. So yeah. I'll take my spatula and just spoon a third of what's in the bowl into the container. of oats and um, it was two cups of oats that we made for these three um, I don't know if it says how big the containers are. No, they're just they're just large entree containers. But we made two cups of regular quick oats to go in these containers. So I don't know if that will be enough but we'll see. Pretty messy, but I'll even it all out. And my goal is because if you see these containers, they I don't know what you call it, but they kind of have a rough lining around the outside. So I'm gonna try and fill it with oats until that mark. And mashed potatoes work just as nice, and you can always transfer. Um, worms that are living in oats to mashed potatoes. That's actually what I did with my first culture. They were living in oats and I just I just took the culture and put them in mashed potato. And honestly, I might transfer these to mashed potatoes because it does take a while for the oats to actually cool down. So who knows? I'll keep you all updated on what I end up doing. Um, you don't get as much out of a box of oats, a box of mashed potatoes as you do oats. But, I don't know how prices compare. I think oats are like $2 a container. And you get a, you get a bunch out of them. But they just take forever to cool down. And like right now, the worms might be here within like an hour or so. And that might be just enough time for these to cool down. Seems like I made I started the oats at nine o'clock and it's ten thirty right now. And they're still pretty warm. But not too warm to the part where they'll damage the container. So I'm just putting them in and then straightening them out. So if they're all even. And for those of you who don't know, you don't feed microbes. They can put yeast in there. I find that they just feed off of the bacteria that the uh, oats or the medium grows. And that's why I chose this tall but kind of long container because the place I'm putting them in is actually right next to my 10 gallon rack, actually on my 10 gallon rack, next to the 10 gallon tanks. And it's a bit longer and I also like tall because the worms climb up. And then you scoop them off the side to harvest them. So I find that taller containers are always better. Something like this. 
nice and tall, but it's not all that big, so that's why I didn't use some other containers. And clear containers are better. I do have one micro worm culture that is um, in a yogurt container, a white yogurt container, and it's super hard to harvest the worms out of those. And it goes the same for the Walter worms and banana worms. Um, you want they, you don't have to feed them, and they climb up the side of the container to get food. Well, so they can be food, but they feed off of the medium that they put in there. So this is about a third of the two cups of mashed potatoes. And you can see that's filled right to that, whatever you call it, the rough part of it. That's the microwave container, and I'm just going to do the same for banana worms and mulch worms. So, which ones? So these are, this is going to be the Walter worms. Banana worms and micro worms. They're kind of all the same. I did the same thing with centipede. So now I'm going to take the lid, wash my hands with it. Three lips, and I'm going to cut holes in them with a box cutter. in each one. They're kind of varying sizes. I cut them with a box cutter so they're not perfect. Try not to cut your fingers off while doing it. Now I'm going to take a paper towel and scissors and some tape. I'm just using clear packaging tape. You don't need much of whatever you're using. These three containers won't use any more than a paper towel. Take your one piece of paper towel, line it up, and cut the hole the best you can. And you want it to um, you want it to get to be over the paper towel a little bit. Well, over the, you want the paper towel to be over the hole a little bit. So just like that. And go like that. Line it up, and I like to be as clean as possible. Try and make it look as nice as I can. So I use a small piece for each side, and this just gives aeration. It's the most important thing. It's the most important thing for a culture to have is aeration, but you have to put something over that air hole. So you don't get bugs and stuff into your culture, like mites. You don't want those in your culture. So you have to make sure that the edges are sealed very nicely. 
so that nothing will get in. Like that. It's very nice and sturdy, and that will go right on the top of one of these. And all you'll do after that is get your starter culture, put it in the middle or wherever you choose to put it, put the lid on, then you're done. And some people choose to put yeast in there too. But I don't. And you don't even need a whole paper towel to do this. Some people reset their cultures every month. The, the microworms. Uh, microworms, banana worms, water worms. Some people reset them after a month. I like to reset them after like two months or so. Just because I feel like they go a little bit longer when you have larger containers. Um, I used to have a container around this size of grindle worms, but I let it go too long, so it crashed. And now I have a 10 gallon tank for grindle worms. And they're very similar to white worms. Now, white worms, some people. Some people uh, get cold strains, colder temperature strain of white rooms without knowing it. I have both. Well, I will have both. I have cold temperature right now. But tomorrow I'm getting a warm temperature strain of them. And white worms are similar to brindle worms because I just put cocoa fibers, you can put potting soil down. And you put the worms in and you feed them every few days. There's a second one. They're pretty easy. Now they do smell, these these ones. Um, they do have a very strong odor. And it'll get even worse if you let your culture go too long. So I'll make sure not to do that. And some people have found a way that there's a no odor, no odor uh, version of microworms. I don't know what they use. So there's different things you can use: mashed potatoes. In, well, instant mashed potatoes, um, rice crispy the cereal, um, instant oats is an option, and then some people have used rice. I don't know if that's the, the non-odor way, but I think it's something with starch. Something about starch. Someone was saying sometimes I forget one. I don't know if that's completely safe for the worms, but there is a way. And I'll find it sometime. But those are microworm, Walter worm, and banana worm cultures, and then the vinegar eels. I'll do another video when I get them up in unboxing and then actually setting them up. And then I'll do another video setting up the white worm culture. So thank you for watching and have a good day.